After, after two years of virtual events, I am loath to interrupt the joyful conversation that is uh, 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 resonating throughout the room tonight. It is such a wonderful thing to be together in person um, to observe the uh, 2022 Phi Beta Kappa Book Awards dinner. Um, my name is Peter Quimby. I am the president of Phi Beta Kappa, which is a fancy way of saying that I'm the chair of the Phi Beta Kappa board, which is the Senate. Um, it is uh, a delight to be here with all of you um, tonight. This is turning into something of a special week for me. Um, last night, I had the privilege of being at the Boston Garden for a, uh, uh, a Boston Celtics game. And, um, and, and that meant that I got to spend the evening with the Prince and Princess of Wales who were in town. Now, when I, when I say that I spent the evening with the Prince and Princess of Wales, what I mean is they were seated four rows in front of me and I had absolutely no interaction with them whatsoever. Well, Maybe, maybe a little bit of interaction. The, the princess did at one point um, um, wave to me and smile. I, th I, th I assume she was waving at me. It's possible that she was waving at the woman standing next to me who was screaming, we love you, Kate. <laughs> but that's, that's open to interpretation. So uh, I can't be entirely clear. So that was a special night. Um, and tonight I get to be here with all of you. And you laugh. <laughs> um, you, you laugh, but I'm serious, because for the last two years, we've had to do this event um, virtually. And it is, it's just a treat to be back together in person. Um, and as the senators in the room know, um, this is the first time that the Senate has gathered together in person um, since we met in December of 2019. And I can't imagine um, a better reason for coming together again as a full Senate um, than to celebrate um, the power of the written word um, and to celebrate the life of the mind and the work of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. Um, yes, indeed, indeed. Um, Events like this, um, when they're planned and executed well, um, come off as if they happened um, effortless, effortlessly. Um, and in fact, that's only true because um, some people have worked really hard um, to make sure that it looks like it was, um, in fact, no work at all. Um, and so I want to take a minute as we start our evening together to just thank all the members of the Phi Beta Kappa staff, but in particular, to thank Aurora Sherman and Delaney Boyd for making tonight such a success. So, Delaney. As I was thinking about our time um, together this evening, I was reflecting on the fact that um, I, and, and I suspect many of you, one week ago today, were gathered around tables with family and friends um, uh, celebrating Thanksgiving. And that reminded me of another Thanksgiving that took place um, probably 30-ish, maybe more, years ago, um, when I was gathered with my family at my great aunt's house. Um, I was a sophomore in college at that point. Um, and my uncle John, this was the uncle who, every time I walked through the door, would say, how are you? When are you leaving? Um, Uncle John asked um, what was a, uh, a straightforward and simple question. What are you studying in college? And my answer was equally simple and straightforward. I was studying Russian language and literature. Now, um, then there came the gotcha question. You probably know what the question was. What are you going to do with that? Um, I, I don't remember exactly what I said to him. I probably said something like, oh, I could go to law school, or, or maybe, I'll, maybe I'll go into government service. Um, what I, what I, I'm sure I was thinking was, please, somebody ask me to pass the stuffing so that we can move on to a different subject, because this is making me really uncomfortable. Um, 
But there were two things, I think, going on in the question that my uncle was asking me. Um, you know, in his, um, you know, how are you ever going to get a job um, perspective. Um, part of this exchange, I think, was a commentary on his view that a liberal arts education was not purposeful and not productive. But another part of it, I think, was that he was concerned for his nephew. He was the youngest of four children. Um, my mother had gone to a liberal arts college, but the family's financial circumstances had changed um, in the intervening years. Um, and so rather than going to a four-year liberal arts college, he had had to, he, excuse me, he had had to work to put himself through community college. And so I can't blame him for a concern that I wouldn't be able to get a job given what I was doing uh, with my studies in college. His central focus when he had been my age was on gaining the skills that he would need to keep himself employed because that was the central focus of his life. That was his primary responsibility. That was essential for him. The value of engaging in the life of the mind was a luxury that I don't think he felt that he could afford, even if he had had the desire to do it. So I don't know how I answered his question then about what I was going to do with a degree in Russian language and literature, but I know exactly what I would say today, and my answer would have been as simple and straightforward as his question, anything I want, right? What, what those of us in this room know is that a liberal arts education doesn't curtail or shut down your options. It only expands them, maybe even expands them dramatically. Um, and we also know from the work that the American Association of Colleges and Universities does every year in surveying employers that a liberal arts education is an asset that employers value dearly in the workforce. Of course, if you are reading the papers or listening to the news or paying attention to the political discourse that's happening in our country this day, you know that my Uncle John is not alone in his skepticism about the value of a liberal arts education. Our country is full of Uncle Johns. Sure, it's true, some of the people who are stirring up this, uh, uh, this, this resentment are people who themselves have very much benefited from a liberal arts education. And they're doing this for purely instrumental purposes. But for many, many other people, um, I think the concerns and questions they have are born of a legitimate confusion about what the value of a liberal arts education is. And we can't blame those individuals for asking questions because they don't have the perspective we do that makes the answer to the question self-evident to us. My uncle's question was a natural one from his perspective. It's our job to keep answering those questions. That's what the Phi Beta Kappa Society does, I would argue, better than any other institution in the higher education landscape. And that's why I feel particularly honored to be associated with this organization that's championing those values at a critically important time um, in the life of our country. The dedication to those values um, will be in uh, stark relief and, and, and celebrated uh, centrally um, in our time together this evening. After dinner, our CEO and Secretary Fred Lawrence will come up and um, begin our formal program. He will recognize this year's winners of the Phi Beta Kappa Book Awards, and he will then engage in a conversation with one of our winners, Professor Farah Jasmine Griffin, the author of Read Until You Understand, The Profound Wisdom of Black Life and Literature. This promises to be an exciting evening for Phi Beta Kappa. Thank you all for being here. Enjoy your dinner. Fred will be up when dessert is served. Thank you, everyone.